All right, hey guys, back out here on the Little Harbor Freight double axle. And as you can see, I've got a setup made down here real nice. I hope that focus is good. Uh, the axles, their naked butts are laying there on the ground. There's the other one sitting over there with my Milwaukee. Uh, I've got the axles of the hardware for the spring set just clamped in. And you can see that there's extra supports were put in there originally. And this trailer has, has hauled about 10 or 12 loads of uh, two cords per load of um, elm, mainly, as we clean our property off. And um, it ain't broken half. There's a lot of supporting factors to this trailer. Uh, people that don't understand, if you go look at the videos, look right up here in the corner, right up there. And if you go look at those videos, you're going to see how this was built. And... The videos are pretty in-depth where I took two separate trailers and I made this double axle. Now it came with originally the slipper spring, so they went up and went in the pockets, but they won't ever they don't ever want to track right. The axles don't want to track right. Puts a little excess tire wear in, so the tires will get more wear that way. Second thing is as you're going down the road, they don't want to follow the road as well. The slipper springs did work, and we've used them quite a bit, and I did haul this out of town uh, about 450 miles and then back. Worked fine, worked fine. Didn't have a problem with it. Um, however, it just doesn't want to haul right. So say you turn corners and things, it doesn't want to haul right. Um, expansion joints in the road, they were pretty rough on it because of the slipper springs not responding equally. So. We've got our other springs here, and they are the standard springs. The axle points down here where the original mounts were, uh, the springs that were on it had the rivets, and this one has, these have the bolt and nut. So what I've done is I've taken these hardware hangers, drilled them out, so now they'll be pockets. And it gives more surface and a quarter inch more height to my trailer, which I guess is okay. Right now, I went ahead and spotted that on, and we're going to weld on the clamps. Now, what I've got here is, when you, if you're gonna do this and just use a set of these axles, and if you look below the video, I'll put the links to all this stuff that I'm using, all these parts, and of course, if you want the best welding wire, I'll put that down there. The INE just <laughs> cooks everybody. You can see in my other videos, it's impressive. Now, this one here, the way it's set up, I cut away some of the metal on both sides so that I have room clearance for my spring sets as my equalizer will work back and forth. The bolts are all put in, but they're not tightened down. So that when I get the welding finished, I'll run them all in. As it sets, I purposely, when I cut two Harbor Freight trailers in half, I purposely set this up at four foot center from here to here knowing that I was gonna have this spring set a year earlier or whatever when I did this, a year and a half ago, I guess. So the center is four foot apart. This one set of springs works perfect for that. So if you just wanted to take some inch and a half by two inch angle, put it together or some C channel, inch and a half wide by two inch C channel like that and run it down the whole length you can and you'll just put you a set of washers on it or something or some kind of a mount to mount the center and you don't need all the hardware I've done those two but a little light duty roughly 4,000 pound I'd say 3,500 pound max trailer that you can haul behind a Toyota or in my case my little escort station wagon that's what I like using this with um, there's nothing that beats it it's about 550 pounds and trust me I know that because I lifted this thing up and said on the sawhorses um, one end at a time, so it's about 275, I guess, leveraged um, each time. Now, we're going to finish this out where I'm going to finish mounting the springs and axles, and then we're going to put the wood deck on the top of it. And there's the wood deck sitting over there. Boom, over there. And this, uh, this whole trailer has been beefed up. Extra welds, extra everything. Has this large two-inch two by two angle welded to the upper frame so the risk of it breaking in half is just it's just not going to happen and hasn't happened 
So everybody thinks the Harbor Freight pot metal is going to break in half. Well, we've got structure of the fenders. We've got structure of the wood bolted down. We have structure of the metal that's welded together. We have the two angle, two inch angle iron. And now we're going to have the mounts right there and the pieces of plate. So it ain't breaking. Settle down. The last thing to do is, of course, put the gate back on. I removed the gate. We have a little walk up gate for it. And in another video coming soon after this one, I'm going to show you the bearings that are used in this and where to get them at. So stay tuned. Um, in fact, I bought them. I'll, I'll put, look below the video. I'll put a link to the bearings. They fit the Harbor Freight, Northern Tool, and Tow Ready trailers that are made on this platform. They fit this axle, oil seal, bearing, bearing, the whole thing. I'll put that below the video. Y'all look for that. Now let's go ahead and get this welded on and I'll show you how simple everything is set up. All right, so we've got the axles on and Kira's over here getting the tires and wheels on, the wheels, I guess you'd say, that where tires are, tires are already on it. And the way that I've got these set up is those plates I was showing you in the beginning there. They were put on so that we have that proper hole for that nut that's on the end of that bolt. And now it's just a matter of tightening these up, tap them around until they're very centered. And of course, if you need to, you can measure from this post to that post once your balance are set, if you need to. Most of the time, these will track nice. They won't be that big of a problem. And there you go. We're starting out to get the tires back on it. She's got them started. We've got our extra supports in and we'll have the wooden floor on here pretty quick. All right, guys, there she blows. Turned around inside the shop. We still got to put the metal rail at the height. The metal rail is just going to go to the height of this fender here. So it's going to be about three inches high all the way around for tying things off. There is the front. We finished that out with some wood on her. And now we have a full floating suspension there. So we don't have no more problems. We beefed up. We've made everything more solid. Uh, used all new hardware, putting this back down so the boards are all back down where they go. And now, no more, we had clips underneath, but now we have them through the top. And still have the ones underneath, we put them back on. But there you go. Not too bad. Harbor Freight double axle trailer. Kind of cool. You can build this. To have a camper that free camper in my other videos we're going to set it on top of this to bring it back in the shop and completely retrofit that camper on this thing setting it right on the top of it so the camper weighs uh, 1600 pounds we're going to put that right on here i have no fear and we will bring it back in soon we're going to be changing those out to 13 inch low pro i call this trailer about a 33 3400 capacity All right, guys, the trailer is done, and it's currently sitting in here with a load on it, kind of hillbilly style. So we have the uh, garden tractor brought it in, and this is the little Harbor Freight trailer. So it's a 10-foot bed. There it is, as you've seen in the video, with the spring set built onto it. And now our next move is we are taking this free elk horn we got and we're cleaning it up so far so good everything works perfect in fact the refrigerator right now on level seven which is uh, almost max is at 20 degrees in the refrigerator that works good now we have the shower here the power here we're going to be putting in a twist lock style so we don't have to have the cord in, in it and an in power inverter will also go in it and on top of the roof, we're gonna put some solar and the water heater, perfect. Tested out pressure, good. The rest of it, nice. So there you see it. There's the trailer. And we are in the process of getting this set up so we can use it on my truck. It's that nice. All right, guys. Y'all look towards any other builds we do on this little trailer. It's a handy, handy trailer. Couldn't you see me running down the highway with my escort pulling this, going camping? <laughs> 